I really have no idea what I'm doing, but <laughs> I know some things that are gonna happen. We're gonna cut some holes in this and then try and make it work. So just enjoy the ride. I was okay with doing some cleanup and modifications to this housing, but now that I've moved further to other pieces, I'm finding that this is getting a little bit crazy. <laughs> I'm all in, I'm gonna see it through, but this is about to get nuts. There's some problems down here. This is too far out. There's a big gap here. Over on this side, looking down, the tin is not up against the flange on the case. Down here, it stands out a good bit. So we're gonna play with all of that. But I got curious about something. I noticed the heat riser tube, it got hacked off at some point. This side hacked off too. The good news is, is I can see through, so it's not totally clogged up. And the tin doesn't, <laughs> doesn't have the hole necessary on each side so that that heat riser tube can attach to the top of the exhaust stack. So now I got a thing. My favorite solution for this, if I had like a swap meet coming up, right? Everything's shut down right now, but if there was a swap meet coming up, I would go to the swap meet, I would look for a good used intake manifold and the appropriate tin to be able to attach it to the heat riser tube. I know the engine will run without the heat riser tube, that's cool. I would prefer to have it, so I'm gonna do what I can. Now, I'll eventually get a good intake manifold from a swap meet, but I don't have that right now, and I'm working right now, so I'm gonna fabric cobble what I can <laughs> to save this intake manifold and be able to hook up the heat riser tube. So I'm gonna have to make a heat riser tube with what I've got laying around, which that's the part that kind of interests me. That's gonna be the, the fun part. Now I do have this old intake manifold. It'd be great if I could just swap this one in and go with it, but I don't have any confidence in it. I may try to clean this up at some point, but it's it's in pretty awful shape. Really the thing is, is I, I'm kind of into trying to do this. This may be a horrible failure, but I'm gonna try it. Right now, it makes sense to finish all of this before we get into really heavy surgery that's gonna be happening up here. To get this heat riser in, we're gonna have to make some holes that the heat can rise through. <laughs> They'll be connecting to the exhaust stacks. And so this uh, cooling tin was not made for that, which is too bad, but we'll cut this open. We have to make some covers, keep the hot air down there and inside the tube. And there's some crazy stuff that's gonna go on up here. So I wanna make sure everything else about this piece and back here for that matter is all nice and straight. You wanna make sure we got a, a good base to work with. Some more tin bending here, and then we'll get into the craziness, <laughs> which I'm looking forward to, because that's gonna be kind of cool. So one thing here, this piece needs to be about right there, but I would like it to sit there on its own. I'm being really nitpicky, but in pursuing stuff like that, it shows me other issues. I think this needs to be this way a little bit more. Bring this down, do something to push this this way. Close that up, big issues over here to mess around with. So one thing at a time, let's see if we can get this side to sit nice. It looks like we've solved our gap over here. Now we need to take a look at this area around the exhaust stack. I'll go ahead and fasten it down for that. I wanna close this gap just a little bit. I think I might try this a different way.
Okay, I think we're in good shape. We've got it in just about as far as I think it's gonna go. I think the biggest part of the problem here is this is just twisted maybe, maybe right about here. So it may be turned a little this way, so we'll just see if we can turn it back that way and then go from there. Okay, that's much better. So a valid question is, is this cheap aftermarket cooling tin that does not fit worth it? No, this cooling tin is not worth all of this effort. <laughs> the engine is worth the effort. If the thing runs hot, it doesn't run as long. These are air-cooled engines and they already run hot. So this is part of what we're doing with Van Demick is doing what we can with what we have. We've started with something pretty cool here. It's fun to try one way or the other. up my gap again <laughs> that's a problem I'm gonna flatten this corner out I think that's causing problems elsewhere okay that looks good the more I look at this piece of engine tin the more I realize it just doesn't have anything going for it it's forgivable that it doesn't have the heater openings. Not a lot of people run heat in a VW, especially down here in Florida. So that's okay, but not having the heat risers, that's an issue uh, for a single center mounted carb. Probably not a big deal for dual carbs, but it's got gaps too. It doesn't really fit. So that's kind of a problem. It doesn't matter what the configuration of your engine is, that's gonna be a problem. And over here, ooh, man, that's a huge gap that goes for quite a ways, several inches. Not good. Here's another issue. I think it's the shape of an earlier engine. I think they were around like this, but the pulley tin for the later engines are kind of swept like this. I, I'm not exactly sure why, but they're, they're not a half circle, so we end up with this huge gap. I've got more cooling tin. I've got the pulley tin that would fit this, and I've got other versions of this that have heat risers and would match this late model tin and everything in between. I've got some stuff laying around, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of committed to the idea of run what you brung. <laughs> Just for fun, I wanna see if we can fabricate this thing into something more worthwhile for this engine. So it's kind of an exercise to do all this, but I wanna close up this gap. And I think what I'm gonna do is leave this tin, cause it's actually kinda nice. Um, I'm gonna leave this tin alone. I'm gonna make this piece of junk really <laughs> fit that. I'm gonna add the holes for the heat risers and cobble together some way to seal them. And I think I'm even gonna come over here and add some steel so that we get rid of that gap. Is this the most sensible thing to do? Absolutely not, but it should be kind of fun. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> I think I can hammer this section out in order to close up that gap. This is stupid. <laughs> So let's just try it. If I ruin it, then I have to get the right thing for the engine. <laughs> what do I got to lose? looks pretty close and strangely uh, this part down here looks a little closer but we're gonna have to work on this that's a pretty big gap Okay. 
wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Got that gap all nice and sealed up. Didn't have to modify this piece of tin, the pulley tin itself. I think that's actually a, a decent piece of tin. But cool. I have used conduit for exhaust before. <laughs> The exhaust on the motorcycle, about 12 years now, uh, I made out of conduit and it seems to work pretty okay. So I'm gonna bend up some half inch uh, EMT, electrical metallic tubing or electrical conduit here, as it just so happens to be very close to the size of the heat riser tube. So I'm gonna bend this up and see if I can fabricate something together to take the place of the missing heat riser tubes on the intake manifold. So how am I going to do that? I might try a series of pie cuts here to get this bend as tight as I need it. Do some pie cuts and weld them up. We'll see. Someone who's fabricated uh, more exhaust systems than I have would really know what to do here, but I'm gonna try that. This is where my bend starts. This is about where my bend will end. And looks like this is the center of it. Still got a line going down the outside. So I'm gonna pie cut right here and bend and see what it looks like. brushed all that first. That really got me somewhere. That's pretty cool. I'm going to wire brush this some more. You know, this coating is not good for you. Before I fully weld everything up, I'll dunk this in some erratic acid. Just a weak solution and it'll eat that stuff off for me. Done it a little bit. I think I did. I think I'll undo this one. what it looks like. This part down here will be easy. I'm going to use the block off plate, so I'll drill a hole through them and then just weld the end of this tube. Just cut it to length and weld the end of the tube to that. The next trick is going to be attaching this end to the existing intake manifold. Looking at a cross section of this tube, you can see some of the engineering that went into this. The tube is not a perfect circle here. It's kind of flattened out against this intake runner to give it more contact. There will be more conduction of heat into that intake runner. And that's pretty cool. And all this aluminum around it helps conduct the heat into this portion. In a way, this is all kind of like a 
a heat exchanger. The source of the heat is the exhaust gas running through that tube inside there, but it's shrouded by this aluminum that conducts heat really well. Yeah, that's kind of like a heat exchanger. The problem is that they didn't leave me any access. They cut this, this mild steel tube off flush with the aluminum part, so I think I'm gonna have to chip away enough of this aluminum here to get access to where I can form the end of this tubing and tack it into place. And I'll want it to be pretty airtight because this is a source of heat and all that'll be happening in this area where I do not want exhaust heat to be getting into the fan. So I'll want to do a, a tidy job of welding the new tubing into this place. This is a little bit nuts, so maybe not worth it, but kind of fun to try it. It's a neat challenge. Interesting, all this grease that's in here. It smells like oil. Not sure how oil would get up in this area. I think I've come up with a complete plan. It's silly, but it's a plan. <laughs> Next part of the plan is to do one of these for the other side. And if we look really close at the manifold, it's different. The bend is right up on the manifold here. On this side, the bend is a little bit before it. So I'm gonna replicate this just as much as I can with this scrap piece. You can see I was practicing stubs here. So I wired this garage. The inspector actually asked me if I was an electrician. And I said, no, I'm just crafty. And I still have the conduit bender. So we're gonna put all that stuff to use one more time and see if we can make one of these for this side out of this. The rest of the plan, I'm just gonna make you wait until we come to those parts and that allows me to change it. <laughs> see, I do not have this down to an exact science. All right, I'm getting kind of comfortable with this. So this one starts about right here. So mine's gonna start about right there. So I'm gonna make sure this is on the outside of my bend. this and put some tack welds in, I think we're really close. I'm gonna check before I really seal the deal here. Yep, I think we're good. the zinc coating or the galvanization to be eaten off of that conduit we'll work on something else I've got the old block off plates I want to drill holes through them so the conduit can fit down into it and I'll weld it from the bottom side and I got some gaskets here that I think are dimensionally correct and we'll set these on here to draw our marks so we're gonna modify these things to be used 
as flanges for the heat riser. Pretty close. Yeah, I basically just want to shave that off. And I want everything down here to be equidistant from the end. one a little bit. This tube is really flat here and this is not. And maybe grind some off the end and I think we'll be good to go. Grind some off of this side here. I'll take a little more. close. Need some off the top. So far so good. Let's take a look at how we got things tacked in here. It fought me a little bit, but we got it. So I'll take this off and finish weld it. Should have turned up the heat a little bit down here. 
one of my interests in spending way too much time on this <laughs> is in the future when I use an aftermarket exhaust on something, I'm gonna wanna make sure that this heat riser works correctly even with an aftermarket exhaust. And what I mean by that is this. The stock one is designed so that some exhaust gas will flow through this tube, actually in that direction. And if you look real close at it, you'll see that here on whatever, this is number two, the number two exhaust stack will have positive pressure to push into this tube. Well, the only way that's gonna work is if there's a way for the air that's in there to get out of the tube. And that's why this pipe skips the number four exhaust stack and wraps around here, goes into the back of the muffler and shows up here at an area of low pressure because exhaust will be escaping out of this outlet. This is the tailpipe here, right? So uh, the flow of exhaust would draw air out of that tube. So this is the outlet for the heat riser. On most aftermarket exhausts, it's a pulsing back and forth. One fires and then the other fires, but there's not a throughput of exhaust gases through the heat riser. So it just ends up clogging up and it doesn't flow as much gas. So it never does its job as good as it could. And it'll eventually get really clogged up because that soot doesn't ever make it all the way through the heat riser. So in the future, I can see myself choosing to use an aftermarket exhaust that needs to be modified to flow like this. So with a little bit of experience finagling this one, that's gonna set me up to where I won't be quite as clueless <laughs> when, I, when I attempt that. if I can make this work. I'll have to cut away enough of this tin here so that this can stick through it. Here's the thing that I didn't really realize is that all oh, this is above the level of that tin. So it'll all be sticking out above this surface here. So I've got to cut an opening big enough that it can do that and then somehow close it in. VW, of course, had a really eloquent way of doing it, but that's not what's going to happen here. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm just going to see what I can do. Just going to start cutting and see if we can close it in without too much trouble here. Uh, just to kind of salvage the cooling tin that's on this beast.
This has been fun, but there's one more thing we need to do before the cooling tin is finished. Whether or not you've heard of industrial tins before, make sure to check out the next video because we'll be fabricating a set to go along with a small change in the exhaust. Then we can think about putting this engine back together and hearing it run. I know we're all looking forward to that, so stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video.